Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jose, and I'm with Santa Monica College Admissions and Records. Michael Dammer is our Senior Enrollment Services Specialist, and Cleve Barton is our Communications Coordinator. Um, we're here to kind of help you out, navigate through some of the systems that we use. Um, we're going to start out by kind of giving you a general overview of Coursera Connect. And we're, we'll try to get, Vincent, we see your comment, we'll try to get any confusion out of the way for you. Coursera Connect is where you, you're going to generally do the majority of your admissions and records related activities, adding and dropping courses, things, things like that. Um, you can log in, go into our webpage, this login button up here at the top, and just hit Coursera Connect. We have a general student account um, that we use for testing, and Michael Dammer will show you the, the navigation of Of Coursera Connect. I hope everyone can see that. You can ask questions. Sure. So yeah, the uh, <clears throat> the general layout when we get to the homepage, there's a few important things to to note. Um, you know, most obvious kind of right there in the center. You'll see your schedule of classes for the current semester. Um, when I say current, I mean the the one that's at, that's currently active. So right now we're we're finishing up our summer semester. We are not yet in fall. So you know, you see us your class dis uh, displayed for fall there once the fall semester begins um, you'll see the section number the subject the meeting times the <clears throat> the location of the course and then a few uh, relevant deadlines that you always want to keep notice uh, especially if you're planning on making changes to your schedule um, you'll see the refund deadline there that's the deadline to withdraw from the class and still be eligible for a refund the avoid a w deadline is to drop the class and avoid a mark on your transcript uh, such as a withdrawal and then the last one is just the general deadline to drop. If you drop by that date, you will receive a W on your transcript. So you always want to be aware of, of the applicable deadlines for any classes you're enrolled in, especially if you're planning on making changes to your schedule at the start of the semester. Always make sure you respect those uh, those deadlines, specifically for refund and avoid a W, because um, those have the, uh, the most impact. On the left-hand side, um, you'll see under email and calendar, the SMC at mail, that uh, you know little colorful icon there that Google provided us, that right there is going to take you right to your student email account. So if, if you're having trouble accessing it, it's going to take you to this SMC sign-on page. Um, your username is also displayed on the home page. You'll see it right there under SMC network account. Um, that's just the, uh, so the, the email address is displayed there. The username is what you're going to use to sign in. So you want to put uh, there, password. And this is where, oh, you want to, uh, Jose, you want to delete the at student.smc.edu part. Yeah, so when we're signing in, it's always just going to be just the username portion and not the full email. So, I think I got the wrong password. All right, well, if we can get in, this is where you'll go. Um, you know, if you're entering in the correct information, you should be able to sign in. Uh, without issue, but this is primarily where you'll receive all of our communication. Great, all right, we're in. So all of our student emails are through Gmail. Um, you'll see this is where all the, the, the communication from your instructors are gonna go, anything from the college, anything from you know other departments, counseling departments, uh, clubs, AS, you know anything related to your time here at SMC, this is gonna be the primary way that we communicate with you. And also on the other end, if you ever wanna communicate with us, we ask that you use your student email account to send any emails to any staff or departments that you're contacting on campus. And you know, ultimately this lets us know that we're communicating with the student um, with respect to, to student privacy. You know, We always wanna make sure that we're discussing student records with the student and not with a third party. So uh, if, if you're emailing us, please do use your student email account. It will, uh, it will speed up the response time immensely and will allow us to actually discuss your record instead of uh, general information related to the college. So uh, you want to get used to checking your student email account. Again, your instructors are going to be contacting you through there as, as the primary means. You know, get used to, to checking that uh, often and regularly. Okay, so back to the, uh, the Coursera Connect homepage. Um, Jose, can we go back to the, the homepage uh, very quickly? I want to point out the quick links area. So in the bottom left-hand portion of this homepage, you'll see the SMC quick links. There are a number of important links there um, 
for uh, for you as a student. Probably the best one that you should know is the financial aid portal there. If you are applying for aid, this is the best way to check your current status of your financial aid application. And this is going to give you an up to the moment status indicator of where you stand with your application. If you require any additional information, if they're missing documents or any further verification from you, it's going to tell you that here. And it's also going to give you a portal where you can upload those documents. So if, if you are currently applying for financial aid, um, I would sign into your Coursera Connect and um, you know go explore the financial aid portal, especially if you're unsure about, unsure about where you stand uh, going into the start of the fall semester. Um, also here we have uh, various counseling resources, um, dates and deadlines, um, d disqualified student petitions, you know, various links. But I'd say the, uh, the, the most important one, especially for financial aid applicants, is definitely the, uh, the portal there that's going to give you uh, really up to the moments your stance there. Yeah, so if, uh, I'm not sure if this sample application is going to have a FAST or anything like that in place, but uh, you can imagine, you know, you can see, you know, file your FAFSA. It tells you exactly what we're looking for for, for you as a student. And there's also, um, if you, you see this link right there on the left, the Corsair eDocs. If you're missing documents, it's going to allow you to upload those documents uh, directly through the website. Those documents will go straight to a financial aid technician and it will um, allow them to proceed in reviewing and, and processing your application. So if you're, you know, if you're applied for financial aid, you're unsure of your status and you're having trouble there, uh, financial aid office is receiving a lot of student contact. And they have limited phone hours right now. They're doing their best to process applications as soon as possible. But I found that you can really do a lot of the, the self-service with students just by going through the portal. It should give you a pretty uh, accurate up to the moment indicator of where you stand and what they need from you. All right, so I think we can go into enrollment now from here. Um, so from the, the SMC homepage, we see the enrollment services link right there. That's really the heart of Coursera Connect. This is where all of your student transactions take place. This is where you add and drop classes for, for all terms. Um, the drop down semester menu is prominent right there in the top center of the page. Um, similar to the schedule over there, it's gonna show the, the current active term, which right now for another couple of days is, is still the summer 2020 semester. So you wanna make sure you click that drop down semester menu, select the term you're interested in. So we got fall starting next week on Monday. We're going to change that term to fall. This is, uh, like I said, it's a test account. It's something we use to test out transactions. But, uh, you know, going back to the summer when we were in a, a course with the student, you know, your schedule is going to be displayed there. You know, again, you have the section number, the course, the meeting times, the, the duration of the class, the, and the, uh, the relevant deadlines. And on the left-hand side, um, can we uh, switch the semester to fall where we have uh, add and drop as an option? So on the left-hand side, this is really the, the heart of, of, of all the transactions. You'll see all the different, the various options. Add a class, drop a class. Uh, those, those are pretty uh, self-explanatory. But we also have swap a class. Uh, swap a class allows you to conduct uh, kind of two transactions at once. So say you're in a class, you want to add another one, but you don't want to risk losing that, the class you're already in. You can do swap a class, and it will only conduct the transaction if both uh, tr transactions are able to take place. So if there's a... Uh, you know, if you want to drop one course, add a second class, it will only do it. It will only drop the, the course if they're able to add the second class. So if you're worried about losing a class or, or dropping something and not being able to get back into it, I, I definitely suggest using the uh, swap a class feature. Um, also, what we have is the wait for a class option. Um, so if you're trying to get into a class that's full and, and you're unable to, to add the class online normally, um, you want to add yourself to the course. The wait list is a prioritized list that will allow the instructors to basically uh, grant ad codes to those students at the start of the semester. So you want to add yourself to the wait list now. Yeah, you'll receive you know, a ranking on that list. And then at the start of the class, you know, if the instructor wants to add students or if students drop and the instructor wants to fill those seats, they're going to distribute the ad codes based on the priority uh, of where you stand on that, uh, that wait, wait for a class list. So if you're, if you're interested in a class and, and it's full right now, definitely add yourself to that. That always opens up two weeks before the start of the semester. So the, the wait list for, for fall courses opened a week, from, a week ago yesterday, or a week ago today, I'm sorry, at midnight. And those will be active until the term starts next week on Monday. We also have an open seat notification list. 
those are active up until the wait list open. So right now for fall, the, uh, the open seat notification lists are closed. But at an earlier point in the term, if you are trying to get into a class that's full, you know, you can add your, your the section, you add yourself to that section's list and you'll receive an email notice if a spot opens up and it's really a, you know, it's a first come first serve for, for who gets the class at that point, but it would, uh, you know, at least notify you if it does open up. Request a class is what we've, is something we've thrown together in the last, uh, probably about year or two. Basically it will allow you to, you know, if there's a course that, that you really want to take that, that's full and there's no other sections being offered, you can go ahead and request the class here. Um, it's not guaranteed, but it really just allows uh, us to be notified if there's a particular section that's really popular and we can, you know, try to fill it before the start of a term and, and get students into it. And also it will allow us to, you know, gauge uh, demand for future semesters and, and maybe be able to offer more sections of a course that, that we, you know, we've come to learn is, is more popular than maybe we anticipated. So, you know, if there's a class that you want to take that's full, you know, there are a number of options that you have to, to try to get into the course and even request for, for more of those courses to be offered, uh, you know, now or, or in future terms. So I would, uh, you know, I, I know a lot of classes can be super popular, you know, especially some of the classes for transfer. It can be frustrating when they're full, but just know that that's not the, uh, the end of the road. You know, don't, uh, don't give up, definitely pursue wait lists and things like that. And also instructors have uh, what are called ad codes. It's basically a nine digit number that they're given uh, before the start of the semester. And that will allow them to, to even over enroll their classes. So if you have an instructor and they're willing to, to add more than what the class is set up for, you know, they're permitted to, to really give those ad codes out uh, to as many students as, as they're able to. Um, so that's, that's always going to be an instructor's decision. Uh, but just know that if a class shows up as full, um, there, there are options. And I definitely uh, encourage you to, to pursue other avenues of, of getting into the course. Um, so just for kind of going through the, the Coursera Connect menu, um, the, the next major option, um, we have, can we go to the pass, no pass grading? Thank you. So we we'll allow students to take classes on what's called a pass or no pass uh, grading system. Um, it's basically what it sounds like if you get an A, B, or a C, it'll show up on your transcript as a P for pass. Uh, you'll receive the unit credit for the course and it will have no impact on your grade point average. If you get a D or an F in the class, it'll show up on your transcript as an NP for no pass. Uh, you will not receive the unit credit for the course. And again, it has no impact on your GPA. So this is a way for students to, to take courses without having impact on your grade point average. Um, you'll still receive unit credit if you successfully complete the course. But again, it just it, it will not have any impact on your GPA. Uh, we always recommend that students consult a counselor before selecting these courses pass, no pass. Uh, it can have impact at, uh, as far as you transferring to a four-year. Um, many universities view pass, no pass differently. Um, so it's it's really up to the student to consult a counselor ahead of time and make sure that there are no you know negative implications of, of applying for a class pass, no pass. I, I know it's generally recommended that you don't select major courses for, for pass, no pass, because that's uh, you know it's going to be something you're going to transfer at a later date. But uh, again, you always want to make sure to speak with a counselor ahead of time before applying for pass, no pass. There is a window at the beginning of the term that students can apply for this. It's the first 30% of the course. So the, about the first, you know, depending on how long the class is, the first 30%. Um, Jose, can you go back, uh, change the semester to summer and, and go look at the students' uh, summer schedules? So I can see the, uh, so we can point out that where that deadline's displayed. Thank you. So similar with the refund deadlines, you'll see the PNP deadline for the course, it's displayed here on the uh, you know kind of the far right row of, of that class schedule area. So you always want to consult that. Um, you have until that point to either apply for pass no pass or if you apply for pass no pass, you know change your mind and decide you want to take the class for the grade, you have until that point to reverse your 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 decision. So basically by that point in the semester it's it's up to you to decide whether or not you want to take the class pass no pass. Again, it's it's definitely recommended that you speak with a counselor before applying for pass no pass because there's a deadline of when you can reverse it and you do not want to be in a situation where you find out, you know, down the road, you shouldn't have done that and we are unable to reverse it because we do uh, have to respect those deadlines when it comes to, to passing the past courses. One of the things uh, say, can we... that I do want to mention is once you select pass, no pass grading and we're past that deadline, we cannot rescind that. 
there's state legislation in place that, that basically says once you select it, that's it. We can't go back to a letter grade. So always make sure you speak with the counselor and make sure that pass no pass grading is what's going to be best for you for that course. Yes, definitely. Can we uh, switch the term back to fall so we can get the uh, the full on menu? All right. So on the can we scroll down a little bit and go back to the left hand side? We're going to be talking about the fees, fee assessment, pay fees online. Um, so the moment you add a class, it's going to direct you to view your your balance. Um, it's going to take you to this page where it gives you kind of an itemized breakdown of, of all the charges for the semester. Um, the enrollment fee is is right there at the top. That's the cost per unit. So it's the uh, you know depending on the number of units you're enrolled in, that's that's what's going to determine the the enrollment fees. Uh, in addition to that, there's an associated student fee, a health fee, a student ID card fee, and a student representation fee. Uh, most of those are optional. The, the health fee is the only mandatory fee. It is not something that we are able to waive. It is something the state of California requires, and, and we are required to assess it for anybody taking a, a normal class on, on campus. The ASB ID card fee and student representation fee are all optional. Um, you do have the ability to opt out of the student representation fee through Coursera Connect. If you do not want the ASB or student ID card fee, you can contact a cashier's office. You would want to email them at cashier at smc.edu to let them know you do not want those fees and they can remove them from your record. You have to do that before the start of the semester. Once the semester starts, they are not able to remove those fees. So if you are not interested in the ASB and ID card fees, just contact cashier, cashier at smc.edu and let them know and they can remove those from your record. Um, with that being said, they are still printing student ID cards. Um, this is something that I learned actually uh, early this morning, so I'm, I'm happy to share it with a, with a large group of students. But the, the cashier's office is going to be doing remote ID card services for people that want a student ID card. Uh, what they ask is that you send, send to them. Uh, again, send it from your student email account. Remember um, what we said earlier, that if you're going to be contacting us, send it from your student email account so we can know that it's coming from the student. Uh, but they ask that you send a government issued photo ID. So, you know, like a passport, driver's license or state ID card. And then I, a passport style photo of yourself. So, you know, you can go if, if this is something you're interested in, you can go to, to any number of places and get a passport photo. And they're, they're fairly cheap. It's just a basic, a small headshot. And you can send that to our cashier's office along with an ID with your name, and, you know, like a passport, driver's license, state ID. So they know that it's a, uh, you know, the photo that you're providing matches your name and they will print in a student ID card and mail it out to you. And they said they're printing them same day and putting them out in the mail. So if uh, that's something you're interested in, um, you can go send that information to cashier at smc.edu um, from your student email account and they can get that student ID card fee, uh, from you. I just want to make sure that you've paid the student ID card fee before that you before you submit those things. Um, but they are still doing ID cards and it is still something that you can get uh, if you're interested in it. So the, the fee assessments here, um, you also have the ability to pay fees online. So that's, uh, you know, to clear your balance, you wanna go there and make sure you do that because we enforce fees nightly. If you have a pending balance and you have not uh, paid it, you will lose that class overnight. We run, a, we run a program every single night to drop all students with unpaid balances for the fall semester. If you wanna hold on to your classes, be sure that you clear that balance the day you enroll in the classes because you do risk losing them if you do not. Um, if you you know if you pay today and receive financial aid at a later date, um, you could be refunded the enrollment costs. Um, so it's you know if if you have to pay to just to hold the class, you can, it's not that you won't be refunded, but it may be a process. But if you want to hold on to the class, the only way to do that is that your balance is at zero the night that you add it. So be sure that you uh, pay attention that you clear all fees as soon as they're they're assessed to your account. Um, because it's uh, you know it's not fun trying to get another class the next morning when you realize you've been dropped. Also, this uh, brings up a good opportunity for us. There's a lot of questions in the discussion field, um, and if you'll notice from our homepage, you can ask several of these questions to Pearl, which is our chat bot, and you just type in a question, and Pearl should give you a, an answer. Um, so. Where can I get my ID card? Yeah, it's hard to talk while answering questions, so if, uh, be patient. We'll try to get to, to as many as I can see. 
Um, if we can keep the, the the discussion section for the, the relevant material, I know everyone wants to share their Instagrams and stuff like that, which is is, is fine, but it, uh, it does clutter the people with actual questions um, if, if everyone's just sharing their, their IG handles. So if we could uh, try to keep that to a single thread so we can get keep the discussion uh, clear, um, that would probably help everybody. Uh, but definitely encourage socialization. I know it's difficult meeting new people with uh, the online learning environments. So uh, with respects to that, we can just keep the discussion clean so we can make sure to answer all your great questions. So Pearl can answer some very great, some very simple questions for you without having to call in or email. Um, just type your question into the uh, into the chat bot, and you should get a a response. Um, Jose, why we have you know, I get my get a good response. You know, um, or can I order an official transcript? And Pearl will give you a good response. So Pearl's available 24 hours a day right from our website. We also have the SMC Go app, which Cleve will speak about. And and uh, are you gonna are you gonna share your screen, Cleve? Yeah, sure, absolutely. Okay. All right, give me a moment here. Okay. All right, hi everyone. I'm Cleve, I'm the Student Communications Coordinator, and I wanna show you some of the communication tools that are great to use. So one is the SMC Go app. It's free to use, free to download, um, apart from whatever your service provider charges you. And uh, as we were just talking about, on the SMC Go app, you'll see Perl right away. So anytime you can just click on Perl and ask a question. Uh, and I use this myself all the time because it gives links and such. Um, so it's uh, you can just type in short questions or cite um, uh, short phrases. So for example, let's say you were trying to use a uh, Canvas, and Canvas is telling you no such account. So you can put in uh, Canvas says. So it takes a moment and then uh, it gives you an explanation about Canvas um, so that some instructors uh, use it. If you are joining after the session has started, it does take some time to create an account. Um, do know that for some instructors, Canvas is already open. Some of them, they won't open it until the day that your class starts. Um, it's, it's up to each individual instructor. But also when you go through, there's other links that you can use. So Perl is really, really, really helpful. Um, so that's one of the features on the app. The other thing I want to tell you about that's really important on the app are the My Messages. And these are also known as opt-in channels. So it, these are different channels where different departments uh, will send out messages to students. So when you go through them, you can read through as to what kind of resources there are. And so for example, a really popular one would be transfer and general counseling. You can click on this opt-in channel. And uh, give it a moment here. And basically, the you would opt in, which is kind of like following the channel. So anytime they have a new update, uh, so let's say they're telling you about a workshop that's going to come up, or there's a deadline, or something like that. If you click on the opt in up here, uh, you'll basically get those push notifications, and you'll get the banner messages. So make sure that on the SMC Go app that you do uh, allow push notifications. So you would just go through the channels that you're interested in and then click the opt-in channel um, option. Uh, so that would be under my messages. Uh, there's also just really great resources in here. This this COVID update, uh, it's, it's a really great uh, website that they've done a lot with where you could just find out where to contact student services and other things. So it's not just uh, COVID related things. There's a lot of resources in there as well. You can see dates and deadlines. So there's a lot to explore in the SMC Go app and we are always working on updating it. So look for new things coming soon. Um, and another place, if you feel like you're not getting uh, notifications, uh, you can go to smc.edu slash stay connected. 
And when you're on the State Connected, it'll tell you how to opt back in if you've ever opted out of getting messages. Uh, also tells you how to make sure that you keep your information updated and correct. So in Corsair Connect, you can go and you can update things like your address and um, telephone number and other important things. Great. Uh, I think that that's it for me. Was it? Did I miss anything, Jose, Michael? No, I don't think so. Um, yep. So make sure you download the app. It's free. Make sure you opt into all the channels. And uh, looking forward to, to this fall with everyone. Thanks, Cleve. I uh, I saw a number of, of questions related to the SMC promise in the chat, and I wanted to go back and touch back on the the non-payment drops. Um, just to ease some worries. Um, if you've accepted the SMC promise, you're automatically opted out of the non-payment drops that we do every night. So if you are an incoming freshman from a California high school and you've accepted the promise and you meet those qualifications, um, do not worry about being dropped for non-payment. Um, those The fees that are on your account, uh, they will show as pending for the majority of the semester. Um, you'll probably see them there through even November, possibly early December. Um, it's ultimately the money that clears those fees comes from the state of California. Um, it's you know an outside source. It's not anything that we have control over clearing until the, the state sends a check. Uh, but just know that those fees are not going to be your responsibility as long as you meet the requirements of the promise, which is to enroll and complete 12 units during the fall and spring semesters you attend. So just stay in your units, pass your classes, and you do not need to worry about those fees. If you do not pass 12 units, it's possible that you may be responsible for those fees. At, uh, will be determined at a later date. Um, but uh, just know that if you stay in those in those classes and you keep your end of the, of the promise, uh, we'll keep our end and those fees will clear out. So don't worry about that if, if you've opted in and that'll be uh, taken care of uh, eventually at some time during the semester, but you will see those fees there for probably the next couple months. I also wanted to bring up the queue list. Jose, are you able to, to share your screen and, and bring up where our queue list link is? Um, Admissions has we've we've started using this service last year for for in office visits to kind of manage our a physical line outside of the office, and since we've had to transition to a remote learning environment, we've kind of integrated into our website for students to call us. Um, so you know our office is still closed to students, uh, but we do have representatives answering our phones five days a week during the the schedule here posted right there. Um, Qless is a website where basically you click the link, it'll ask for your name your and your phone number, and I believe your student ID number. And you'll be added to a list, you'll be sent a text message with an approximate uh, time of how long it'll take for somebody to call you. Um, so you just, like I said, enter your, your name, your, your cell phone, and I think on the next page it'll ask for your student ID number. Um, but you just sign up for the list, it'll tell you how many people are ahead of you, um, you'll receive text messages as as the as you get closer in line you'll get text messages with updated kind of an estimate of, of when you'll receive a phone call and and then yeah once uh, once we have somebody available you will receive a phone call from an admission staff member it'll be a live person on the phone and they'll be able to help you with whatever you need help with so if, if uh, you know if you've tried uh, you know sending us emails you know we you know emails probably take a few days to, to get a response back right now but this is something that you can get a live person on, um, you know, throughout the week, Monday through Friday. I have several questions about textbooks and where we can find those textbooks. Michael, do you think we can speak about that and I'll navigate? Sure. Yeah, so we, uh, we've recently started, um, let's go to the, uh, the searchable class schedule. Um, just to kind of start at the beginning. So we've, we've recently added an option for, for searching for classes that allow you to search for classes that don't actually require a textbook. So if you're trying to save some money and you don't want to you know, take a class that requires a big old expensive book, um, let's go to search options and expand the, uh, the search options. See that, the, yeah, that arrow right down there, let's scroll down. So we see how this textbook option, classes using zero cost or open educational resource. If you're interested in taking classes that don't require a textbook, that is that is the option you want to look for. Um, it's not a, it's not available for all classes. You know, it's really a, you know it's it's a new thing, but it's something that we're promoting and trying to get our instructors to to buy in on. 
But uh, that's definitely a great way to save some money is, is taking classes that use the open educational resources because um, then you're, you know, you're just paying the cost per unit or, if, you know, if you're a promise student, you're not paying, you're not paying anything. You're just signing up and, and enjoying the perks. So I would definitely sir, uh, look for that um, the next time you're enrolling in classes. Uh, but just speaking generally, our, our bookstore website has a has a breakdown of everything that's required. Um, Jose's going to be rejoining. I don't have the ability to share my screen. Cleve, do you? Uh, yeah. What is it that you need to share? Uh, let's bring up bookstore.smc.edu. Sure. Give me just a moment here. Thank you. So if you're looking for the actual required material and you, know, you haven't gotten a syllabus from the instructor and you're trying to get ahead and, and get everything you need, our bookstore websites has a breakdown of, of every required material of all the required materials for each section. And it's the most direct way to do it. And it'll also give you options of where to purchase. So let's go to, while we're in here, we're going to go to textbooks, click that, click that menu top left corner. The Oops. Yeah. Or you can click that textbooks. There we go. Yeah. All right. So it's, re it's really simple. We want to select the term. So click that. We're going to choose fall 2020. I'm going to choose the department and the course and the section number. So the, the course is Anthro 1, Anthro 2, Anthro 3. The section number is the four-digit number that corresponds with the instructor and the time it meets and, and all that. Is there a – can we click it? Oops. Let me choose it. Oh. That's not – It's adding them to the – So yeah, we, we have a price comparison feature that shows the, uh, I think the list price on our website as well as Amazon and, and other sources. So you can look for it here. Everything that's required for the course will be displayed there. And it'll also show uh, materials that are maybe recommended but not required. It'll break down that way as well. Um, I see a question about how we use the textbook voucher with the bookstore. Um, so if you go to the, if you, you know, add everything to your cart and you proceed through to checkout, there is an option for using a, a bookstore voucher there. So if you've been issued the textbook voucher, you can select that in the checkout and indicate that you're a promise student. And if you've uh, if you've been processed and everything's there, you should be able to check out using the the voucher that you have in place. So just uh, you know proceed through. You do have to order it through the bookstore though. If you're using the voucher, you can't use any of the outside the outside uh, sources like Amazon or any of the other places. So you do have to buy it through the, the college bookstore but just proceed through to the checkout and it should give you that option if you're an SMC Promise student to use the, the book uh, voucher if you've, if you've been issued it. All right, yeah, so it's, it's all super simple. Um, it, it's recommended that you wait until the first day of class, I'd say to, to speak with the, to hear what the instructor says um, regarding materials. Um, otherwise you can get it, uh, get everything through here. And the, uh, as far as the, the bookstore, you know, that's going to be obviously you're, you're purchasing books, either purchasing them new or purchasing them pre-owned. Uh, but we also do have the option um, during normal circumstances of uh, borrowing books from the library. There are a number of, of student textbooks on reserve there uh, for students that are enrolled in the course. So there, there are a number of different options for acquiring textbooks and even taking classes that, that do not require any textbooks. Um, I'm just trying to catch up on the questions, see if there's anything related I can touch on right now. I see, uh, Michael, maybe you want to address a lot of students who have questions about Canvas, about um, getting into it, how come they can't sure. see it, uh, how is it used? Yeah, Canvas is where you'll go to access course material. So Course Air Connect is where you went to enroll in the classes. Canvas is where you'll go to actually access, you know, the, the various content that the instructors are going to put up there. Um, instructors do have to publish their course to Canvas manually at the, at the start of the term. So it's it's something where, you know, you may not see your courses there li listed there yet. Um, but if you see the class listed on Coursera Connect that you're enrolled in the class and everything looks normal on Coursera Connect, you just don't see the class on Canvas. Um, 99 times out of 100, it's just because the instructor hasn't published the course yet. 
Um, they need to go in there and manually publish this, the class to their students at the start of the term. Um, you know, they're still on vacation. Stress doesn't start till next week. Um, go easy on them, be patient. I'd imagine you'll see it there at the very latest by the start of the semester next week. Um, if you still see that the course isn't published there in Canvas, um, you know, send a friendly reminder to your instructor at the start of the semester uh, that it's not there yet. Um, but again, if you see that the class is there in Coursera Connect and it's listed on your schedule and you just don't see it in Canvas, don't freak out. Um, that's very normal. It's not going to show there until the, the instructor pushes it forward. So just uh, you know, be patient. I'd expect that there by the start of next week and uh, just check back then. Um, but you should see everything there uh, very shortly. Now, let me just add to that, Michael, that uh, you can always contact your instructor. If you go to the bottom of our website, you can click on the directory and you can look up the instructor if you have questions about how to contact them. And you can ask them if they actually are using Canvas for their class. Uh, some instructors might use Zoom or other means to yeah. teach their classes. Um, so do reach out to your instructor. It's totally OK. Yeah, it's a good point that not all classes use Canvas. You know, instructors are, you know, they're free to kind of determine how they teach their class. You know, a lot of a lot of them do use it. It's a great tool, but it's uh, it's not required for them in any way. So if the instructor is opting not to use it, that's, that's fine as well. Um, I generally, like I said, check your student email accounts. You should receive a lot of communication from instructors over the next week or so as we get closer to the start of the semester, especially if they're uh, specifically if they're classes that begin next week. We also have. Uh, you know, within the semester, we have late starting sessions that begin in weeks five and weeks nine. But the uh, the f courses that begin next week, I'd imagine that you'd hear from your instructor with further instructions, probably uh, by uh, sometime over the weekend at the latest. So as we're getting pretty close to our end time. And I just wanted to mention once again, the importance of the dates and deadlines. Um, it's very important that if you're going to drop a class, you drop it before that deadline. If you don't want a W, drop it before the W deadline. If you're trying not to pay for a course, it's important that you drop classes before the refund deadline. Um, we're strictly regulated on dates and deadlines. Now, we made a lot of exceptions in the spring because of the COVID pandemic, but we're scaling back on a lot of those exceptions. So please keep an eye on your dates and deadlines. That's very important. All dates and deadlines are sent to you. Um, they're pushed through the SMC Go app. So if you download that app, it's going to be specific to your courses. Um, so just please keep that in mind. The best way to get a hold of admission staff, as Michael said, was to add to our queue list. Um, someone will call you back. The average wait time now is about 30 minutes, but you'll be able to speak with an admissions and records representative who can troubleshoot your student account and escalate your issues to people that can solve things for you. Um, but that's the easiest and best, most convenient way to get a hold of an admissions person. It's better than calling in. It's better than emailing. Um, just add to that queue. Our queue is open uh, on Mondays, Thursdays, and Fridays from 8.30. Well, I should say Mondays and Thursdays, 8.30 to 4.30. Tuesdays and Wednesdays, it's 8.30 to 6. Friday, it's eight to 12 and you'll be able to add that list and someone will call you back. Any other quick comments? I know we have Dr. Tovar is the Dean of Enrollment. He's answering a lot of your questions online. Um, I wanna say thanks to him. He's really doing a great job. He's keeping us uh, online and making suggestions of things that we need to do. But more importantly, he's answering a lot of your questions online. Um, we appreciate his help always. Um, Michael, could you have anything else to add? I see somebody commented a second ago, did, did they explain what a W is? A W is just a, a mark in your transcript that stands for withdrawal. It basically means that you started a class and withdrew from it uh, you know, past a certain point of the semester where there's a mark on your transcript. It has no impact on your grade point average, um, but you are limited to the number of attempts you have for each individual course. So when you're, if you take a class and drop it, you'll be able to add it one more time without any special approval needed. If you drop it again and you want to take it a third time, though, you're going to have to see a counselor and get special approval. So always, uh, you know, make sure when you're dropping classes that you understand the, the ramifications. Um, you know, counselors are always available to give guidance about um, what you should do in those situations. Um, but uh, yeah, a withdrawal is basically just means you, you started a class, but you didn't finish it. It has no impact on your grade point average. 
but it does have impact on things like being able to repeat the class in the future and also uh, your progress probation calculations. You know, if you get too many W's, you can go on probation for not finishing, um, you know, for not finishing your courses. But it's, uh, you know, like I said, it's, it's an option if you can't finish the class for a reason, you know, things come up, but it's always recommended that you speak with a counselor anytime things like that do come up to get the best advice. Uh, I'm just going to emphasize again the uh, the dates and deadlines. It's really important. Uh, if you want to, you can add things like your emails to your um, your SMC email to your other emails to or on your phone. So if you go to smc.edu/faq, as in frequently asked questions, you can see video t uh, tutorials how to do it for uh, the various phone types. Uh, I'll put it in the chat as well. What that link is. But know that the messages you're going to get through SMC Go, there's going to be kind of general reminders. Um, everyone's classes are a little bit different, so the dates and deadlines will be different. So definitely manage that within um, your own Coursera Connect account. Even if you have different classes that started at different times, they might have different dates and deadlines. So you are responsible for all those. Um, so do be checking your email a lot. And um, so I'll put that uh, FAQ in the link as well as the uh, the link, which I forgot to mention earlier, which is smc.edu slash smcgo to download the app as well. Now, we, we did have a, a question about um, how to establish residency. And that is, is, we could do an entire different 45 minute live session on how to establish residency. But for right now, you wanna go to smc.edu slash residency and start reviewing those there. Um, there is a webinar that we, we did about two weeks ago, comprehensive information on how to establish residency. That's posted at that webpage that you could review. This live session is recorded and will be available to you from the SMC webpage. At smc.edu slash welcome. All the, the various presentations. Uh, there was one earlier today about the SMC Promise. Um, they're all recorded and they will be uploaded to smc.edu slash welcome. So check back there um, probably by the, uh, or later on in the week, you should have everything there for uh, to watch again if you'd like to. Any other final questions before we get to the end of our program? Thanks everyone for joining us. We appreciate it. We want you to know that we're here to support you. Um, you just have to reach out for help as early as possible. Like I said, Michael Dammers, our Senior Enrollment Services Specialist. Cleve Barton is our Communications Coordinator. My name is Jose Hernandez. I'm the Admissions and Records Supervisor. I mentioned Dr. Tovar, he's on the discussion link. Um, we're all here to help. We just, you need to reach out to us before it becomes too late. And by that, you miss a W deadline and you're trying to drop a class. You've missed the pass, no pass deadline and you're trying to get past no pass grading. It's important you try to reach out to us as early as possible. We appreciate you guys coming to SMC. Um, thank you so much for being here. Again, we're here to support you. Um, anything that you guys need, just reach out to us and we're more than willing to help. Any fine, final closing thoughts? Michael, Cleve? Uh, no, just uh, I was going to say that the uh, the email addresses at Santa Monica College all follow the same formula. It's just last name underscore first name at smc.edu. Uh, my name is Michael Dammer. My email is just dammer underscore Michael at smc.edu. Um, that goes for all of us here with the exception of Jose, who has a middle initial. It's just Hernandez underscore Jose underscore G at smc.edu. So if uh, anybody has a specific question that didn't get answered in the discussion, um, feel free to contact me directly. I'd be happy to provide additional assistance. Our queue is open now. If you'd like to join um, the admissions and records queue, it is open now. You can get into it and speak with a live person today. Um, financial aid is very busy at this time of year. They have a queue as well. It's only open from 12 to three. What I suggest is you, you be at their webpage at noon exactly. So when their queue becomes active, you can add to it. Um, somebody will call you back. Thanks again, everyone. Please stay healthy and we'll, we'll, uh, we're here to support you. Just let us know whenever you need any help. Hey, uh, I see a lot of students are asking about the 
how to get the ID. I'm going to send a message through SMC Go how to do that. So make sure you download the app so that you're able to get all the information on how to get your SMC ID. Thanks again, everyone. Have a good day. Thanks, everyone.